So today I have one of the best and the easiest to set up 1080p monitors you can buy for your MacBook. Let me explain. Welcome back to the channel. So here I am, a Mac channel, right? And I'm reviewing a 1080p monitor right here. This is called the BenQ. It's the GW2785TC. That's the, the model number, it's always a mouthful. So this is by BenQ and it's a 1080p monitor. Now, if you're used to my channel, you know I do product showcases. I don't do huge technical reviews. I just give my honest opinion on kind of a showcase of product that I like. And I get sent a lot of different products. This was one of them a while ago. And I was thinking maybe I wasn't gonna do a 1080p monitor. I'm a Mac channel. I'm used to those four and 5K screens. So why in the world would I be doing a video on a 1080p screen for a Mac? Well, let me just tell you, this thing is great for just content creation and a whole bunch of other things as far as just where maybe, you know, if you're doing coding, and I'll explain that in a second. But overall, it's just a good quality monitor for the cost, and I'll get into the cost in a second as well. It's just something that I think that, you know, the ease of use with it when I set it up with my MacBook, how quickly I could get it set up, how quickly I can mount it on the stand and all that kind of stuff combined made the experience really well, you know, really good for me. So I wanted to share it with everyone. So stay tuned, and we're going to get into some of the key things on this thing and why I liked it so much. And you're going to find out why am I doing a review of this? because I really like it. All right, a couple things first of all. This is not a budget 1080p monitor, right? It's actually about 248 bucks. I'll show you a picture on Amazon right there, but I think it's totally worth the cost, right? Now it's a huge 27 inch screen. You can see it right here. It's an IPS panel, which is really nice. The viewing angles are really nice for an IPS panel. I gotta give it credit there as well, all right? It's got a five millisecond response time on it. And I think it said 75 Hertz as well, although I don't get too much into that because I'm not a gamer. But overall, it's just a great monitor for a Mac, believe it or not. And I'm going to get in a little bit more about that in a second. I just liked the overall design of it as well. It's got small bezels around. It's very elegant, just black, you know, all the way around. So overall, it's a nice looking monitor too, which is one of the reasons I like it. But that's not the main reasons. Oh well, yeah, one concern I had is it's 250 nits of brightness, right? And as you can see, I think it's about 85% brightness right now. I have found no problem with it using it any place inside. I moved it downstairs, upstairs. So overall, I think the brightness is good. I mean, it's got a matte screen on it, anti-glare screen, which is really nice. So if you're going to be keeping it inside, which I think you will, it's a monitor, I think you'll be okay. If you're in a really, really bright space, you know, definitely maybe try it out and then you can see if it's good enough for you. All right, so first of all, the build quality. I think the build quality equals that of a four to $500 monitor. Let me explain. The stand in the back, that back part of the stand back here is made, they're made really well. They have metal pieces in them. This thing's like a tank. It weighs like double my iMac over there. So it's actually really heavy. So it stays in place really well, but that doesn't mean anything. When it shipped in the box, it was packaged really well. But the number one reason, or not the number one, but one of the reasons I liked it so much is when I actually took it out of the box, it took me about two minutes to set up. I could snap things into place. There was one little screw I turned and everything was ready to go out of the box in two minutes, which is pretty unbelievable when you're dealing with other stands from other monitors. All right, so the stand is really heavy and it's actually important because as soon as I set it up, I noticed that this stand was pretty incredible. You can move this thing so easily up and down. You can see it just floats up and down. You can move it up and down. You can move it sideways. You can move it this way. It's got every different plane of angle that you want to actually move the monitor. This thing can do, unlike the studio display, although it's nothing like that. But anyways, you get the idea. The stand is perfect. You can also rotate this thing very easily. Look at this thing. I can move it like this. It'll rotate all the way around if you want to do coding views. So if you want to do coding and you want to have it in portrait mode, you can do that within a couple seconds, you can just spin it around. All that's set up. There's nothing to change or anything like that. So just to stand alone made the experience really good. All right, now for the ports, all right? I actually like the port selection here. It comes with one HDMI version 1.4, one display port version 1.2, and then one display port out, and I'll get into that in a second. And then it comes with one USB-C port, and it has power delivery up to 60 watts, meaning that if I'm just showing you here in this example, this is actually charging my MacBook at 60 watts. So I love that feature as well. A lot of places don't have that. But the USB cable is the one I'm using right here. It's actually what shipped in the box. It didn't come with the HDMI. It came just with this USB-C, but I think that's regional. Anyways, it works perfectly. I just plugged it in and it worked within two seconds. It was up and running. So overall, the experience has been really good. Now, the reason for that second display port out is that this thing can be daisy chained. So you can have, I think, up to four of them in a row. And you can connect them right to each other so that there's no cables floating around unlike my setup here, my example, but you get the idea that if you wanted a clean setup, they can daisy chain each of those units across like a table or something. All right, so for now, for the real reason that I really like this thing. So I plugged in the USB port, everything came up in one second, worked instantly. I hit one button, just okaying the, the connection on my MacBook. And all of a sudden I had a second screen here. And as you can see, I'll be showing you close-ups and everything, but the second screen just worked right out of the box. I have no problem with it. Put something up there you can take a look at. 
But I, it just was so easy. I mean, a lot of other monitors I have, you have to think, figure out the right cabling. You have to figure out something else. Something else goes wrong. This thing worked within one minute, and it's just the ease of use. If you're not really used to doing all this stuff, this monitor just makes it so easy for people that don't use usually a second monitor. And then the other thing, too, this is the main thing of all, is the color accuracy, right? So the colors on this thing were just so incredibly correct when I opened it up and I turned it on. I didn't have to do any changes to the color. Now, there's a whole range of things you can do to this monitor, which I'll get into in a second, but I had to do none of that. I just adjusted the brightness a little bit up to about 85 to 90%, and this is what it is at now. And then I basically was able to use it. It was very accurate to my max monitor. I had to do no calibration. I had to have to change anything like vivid mode or anything like that. It just worked and it was almost, I and mean, it was one of the most accurate monitors when I just turned it on without touching a setting. And that's, again, one of the reasons why I recommend this because a lot of monitors are good, but you have, if you have to dial them in and you don't know what you're doing, they end up not being good. This one was great out of the box. I had no changes whatsoever and I'm happy with it. And again, the resolution at 1080p, is good enough for me for, you know, if you keep it a couple feet away from you, or maybe two or two and a half feet as your second screen, the resolution doesn't really affect me that much. And it just gives you a ton of real estate to show different things just like I'm doing here. At the end of the day, though, if you do want to make some changes to it, it definitely has an easy menu system and it's got a lot of different built-in settings. A couple of the settings are brightness intelligent mode, so it can change the brightness if you want it to. It's also got um, what's it called? Care mode, and that's basically to protect sensitive eyes. It's got reading mode, and it removes a lot of blue light from the screen if you go into reading mode. And then finally, it's got, well, it's got more of this, but it's also got a coding mode. So if this goes into portrait and you're doing your coding on it, it'll actually bring out the colors of the text a lot more, you know, I guess it's more vibrant, so you can kind of pick up the different levels of code. And it's kind of hard to explain, but if you're a coder, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's got that built into it as well. And then one more thing, if you're used to like Kindles and stuff, it's got like an e-paper mode where it turns everything black and white. So if you're reading a book or something, you can flip this into portrait mode and it acts almost like a Kindle. And then finally, it does have some other things built into it. Believe it or not, it actually has speakers, two different speakers in it, stereo speakers. Now, again, they're not going to be the best. They're a little bit tinny. I've got to say that. But it does also have a microphone in here built in that actually has noise cancellation in it. And there's a button over here I'll show you on my screen as I'm talking, but you can easily turn it on or off to make sure it's off. So if you're doing video calls and stuff like this, this microphone will have you covered. All right, so I'm going to show you in a second the menu system to music, so stay tuned for that if you just want to see the menu system. Overall, though, so why do I recommend this so much? A 1080, you know, 1080p screen on a Mac, you know, Mac channel where I'm dealing with 4 or 5K screens because I never thought I would enjoy it so much. All right, it's obviously 250 bucks versus spending 500 or 1,000, 1,500 bucks, so the price is in the right range. It's also good enough for most things, especially if it's a couple feet from you. You're not doing extensive, you know, up-close text on it and stuff. I think just watching content in 1080p is perfect. Getting a lot more real estate to spread things out for maybe doing some business work or stuff like that are, is great as well. So I, I totally recommend the viewing angles on this thing and the colors pop and I did nothing to it out of the box, right? I flipped in the USB-C cable into my MacBook Air. This is an M1 MacBook Air and it worked out of the box within two minutes and I had no stress whatsoever and that's why I recommend it. So for the cost, you can't go wrong with this. It's the BenQ again. If I can find the model number, I'll say it's the BenQ GW2785TC. It's one of the best 1080p monitors you can get for your Mac and probably your PC as well. I did plug it into my PC and it worked flawlessly as well. I just didn't do as, as much testing on that. So I do recommend this, although I'm, again, I'm not doing a full review of it. Do your own research and everything like I always tell you. We're going to get into the menu systems here just to show it to you and then you can pause it if you want to see the menus and then I'll finish it up at the end. All right, so I'm going to close this up. I liked it a lot. The ease of use, the quality of the screen, the quality of the build quality of the stand. Overall, for 250 bucks, you can't go wrong if you need a 1080p monitor or if you're thinking about one. I didn't think I would need it or want it, but I did. So I can't say anything really bad about this BenQ monitor, and I'm glad they sent it to me. 
Um, you know, I do, there's a lot of things I turn away. This was not one of them. This was kind of teed up to be one of them because I usually don't do 1080p, but I was, I was actually surprised and you might be too. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.